Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So hello everyone. Uh, hope you guys are all doing all right. So I'm yeah I'm Luca. I'm working in open robotics here in Singapore, and I'm going to present about this project that we've been doing, which is a hardware project, uh, which is called the Open Vision Computer, which is a fully open source uh, ROS-based uh, vision system. So first of all, okay, you know the usual rounds of introductions. So that's me in some old pictures from some time ago, and I'm Luca and. I'm working at you know doing embedded system stuff at Open Robotics and other stuff also, uh, but I've been doing you know embedded system stuff for like quite a few years by now, about six years and like four years for of like robotics related stuff, uh, like mostly in drones before in NUS and like recently in Open Robotics doing like cameras and uh, robotic arms. And who we are? Uh, if you guys work with robotic stuff before, probably you heard of us, but if you haven't, then. You know, we do, we do like open source software and hardware for robotics, and and yeah, you know, we 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 like that's our our motto. You know, we we use them to uh, to solve important problems and helping other people to do as well. And you know, a bit of you know intro. Like our HQ is in Mountain View in California, but we are a bit all over the place. Our second largest office is uh, here in the U.S., where we move about two and a half years ago by now. Um, and, by, and we have a bunch of people like scattered all over America and some uh, sp uh, people also in Spain, in Europe. Anyway, so down to actual the actual uh, presentation. So I'm going to present about this uh, open vision computer. And this is a bit of the outline. So first of all, about the motivation why we, be, why we build this project. And then a bit of the, the path that brought us to where we are today, which we are the third iteration of this hardware project. And then you know a, a bit of talking about the architecture and how to actually cut you can customize and build your own future development and then not quite demos but like videos of like you know some simple applications that you can uh, you can do with it. So first of all, why um, if if some of you people work with robotics before, uh, there is generally a need for uh, smart cameras uh, like for smart. Uh, for robotic applications and like some some popular examples are you know the interior sense or the Z. And the, the reason why those are useful is that they they help um, roboticists in um, in like in off sourcing some of the computation like to to, to the cameras. Uh, and th there is a lot of solutions out there, but the problem is that none of the solutions uh, existing right now are open source, so they cannot be customized. You just buy this black box, you plug it to your computer, and then you hope it does what you want it to do. Uh, and then also some of them, like for example the Z, uh, they, they actually use the host machine to do all the processing, so they wouldn't like a powerful GPU, for example. So we decided to build the OVC, which is fully open source, both from a hardware and from a software point of view, and from a firmware point of view, of course. And it also includes an FPGA, so you can offload some of the most computational intensive tasks uh, from your machine. You can offload them to the FPGA, like saving computational power, uh, which is very, very important for like complex robotics application where your, your computational power is somewhat limited. Uh, and then, you know, but apart from, you know, all the customizations you can do in FPGA, it offers what people need most commonly just out of the box. So what people in robotics need most commonly is just synch uh, images that are synchronized with IMU data to do sensor fusion. Uh, then, then, you know, they would need like stereo images also synchronized with each other to do stereo matching and detect like the distance and depth of objects and features to do localization. So all of those features are just offered out of the box without needing to do any sort of development by yourself. So a, a brief history about the journey. So the, the journey started a few years ago with what was called the Open Vision Computer One, uh, which is yes, like 2017. And it included, so the, the module you see in the middle is actually, oh, okay, I will not move the mouse much anymore. Um, is actually an NVIDIA TX2. So it was a, a fully embedded, it was quite large. Uh, it was yeah, fully embedded and it was tailored for uh, an NVIDIA TX2. And, and it was actually, yeah, TX2 and an Altair FPGA. 
and it was actually uh, used in the DARPA FLA program, which is one of the drones, uh, the drone you see over there uh, in the picture. Uh, but again, so both this one and the, so the second, the second iteration was uh, similar, uh, but it was it was more modular because now the, the it was a two-part system, that, so you could it was still designed for the TX2, but it was somewhat more modular because you have the imager module and then you have your computing module. But it was still uh, tailored for NVIDIA TX2, and it was designed like one year later. And so what 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 we learned quite quite uh, quickly is that, um, you know, uh, NVIDIA TX2 was amazing and great a few years ago, uh, but l recently uh, NVIDIA has, has, you know, released a bunch of new modules, uh, which are great, you know, like orders of magnitude better. I mean, more probably not orders of magnitude, but you know, they are much better, you know, with the latest and most amazing system on a, on a chip, but they are completely incompatible with the TX2, or like you know, with, with basically with whatever we developed before, making it basically obsolete. So what we decided to do is we decided to uh, to do a completely different approach, where now our camera is just a USB device which can be plugged to whatever is your computer of choice. Um, and then also, you know, there, there was also a bunch of other issues before that with the sensor we are using were very expensive. So this is the the previous OVCs were like very, very expensive also because of that reason. So now we simplified it a bit, made it just a USB camera, and this is what brought us to uh, OVC3, which is, you know, uh, you know, so cheaper sensors and it's, and it's, you know, much more, much more flexible, which is, you know, the, the module that you see over here. So just a brief overview. So there is uh, two monochrome sensors, which is, which are the one, the, uh, which are great for stereo matching because they have like greater spatial resolution. And then there is a RGB sensor as well, which can be used for object recognition. For example, if you want to like track or follow objects with your robot. And then we have this, we have a, one of those uh, modules that includes uh, a system on a chip which has both uh, a quad core ARM processor and an FPGA fabric. It's from uh, Xilinx, it's called Zinc. And then look then plenty of memory, both RAM and uh, non uh, non volatile memory to to store your data. And then also, you know, we have a cheap a cell phone grade IMU that we use, you know, in case you, uh, in case you know your application for you have a, you know a simple IMU is good enough for your application, which is the case in many robotics applications. Um, and then you know. Uh, the the main the main interface which is uh, USB 3 Type C so we have uh, about five gigabit uh, of bandwidth to the host machine through USB 3 uh, that we use for both power and data and then you know a bunch of extra interfaces which can be useful if you want to inter if you want to uh, let's say if you want additional storage you can use an SD card interface or if you want to connect to external peripherals you will also have an Ethernet interface. Which is great, I think, for lidars because a lot of lidars run over Ethernet. And then, of course, we design it to be quite modular, so it can be expanded uh, quite dramatically. So we, we have like four up to four additional stereo pairs that you can add. So you can have up to eleven cameras in parallel. So the the the, the version I have here, and we also have at the booth, is having seven cameras in parallel. So it's a bit downsized for simplicity. And then we have an additional. GPIO where you can put, uh, where you can add whatever peripheral we need that we use, for example, for additional serial, uh, for the serial interfaces or for additional IMUs and sensors. And th this, is, this is an example of uh, a board that you can build and use with, with, your, uh, with your own like custom needs. So the idea is that the main module is quite a complex module, so you wouldn't really want to change it. But because we offer this this uh, GPIO that you can you can connect to, and because it's an FPGA, so everything can be reconfigured, then you can you can actually build a very simple, a much simpler board with whatever peripherals you need, and you can just plug it. So in this case, we had yeah, the vector nav, a bunch of serial interfaces, and a bunch of uh, debugging ports, which is great. You know, makes customizing makes customizing the project like much much easier. 
And then, of course, as I mentioned, like the external cameras. So also like a very, like a much, much simpler uh, board compared to the main module that then you just connect through FFC connectors to, to your camera. And you can have up to four of those. Uh, and then, of, of course, th this was from the hardware point of view. But then if you, if you look into the software, um, of course, you can push uh, algorithms to the FPGA. As I mentioned, you know, we do corner detection. Uh, and then, in, uh, because we also have a quad-core ARM processor, which is quite a powerful, like 1.5 gigahertz quad-core ARM processor, which runs a full Ubuntu distribution, you can actually run whatever, uh, like whatever software you have that can be compiled on an embedded ARM can be run on the uh, on this on this processor itself, which again you know has, has quite a lot of power to it, which is great. Um, no, no, just just a bit of info on the architecture. So this this camera was designed to be ROS compatible, um, and w what it does is that on connection it runs uh, you know uh, it, it it runs USB uh, Ethernet over USB. And then it tries to communicate to a ROS master running on um, on your machine. And if you have a ROS core, a ROS master running on your, your machine, then it's just literally plug and play. Like you connect it, and then you get uh, all your data streams. Uh, and then, you, of course, bec because it's very important to have very synchronized data for robotics applications, uh, we have we synchronize the IMU and the images together, and we stamp them. We stamp them with the ROS uh, with the system time. And then yes, we we you know fully fully uh, integrated and fully reconfigurable uh, corner detection, which is again also a great feature. And of course, like you know, we wouldn't be here if the the whole thing wasn't open source. So uh, everything about it is open source. So we we have a repository called OVC, or yeah, or there is over there in GitHub. Uh, so part of starting from the hardware files, which are designed with KiCad and said the KiCad. Uh, speaker couldn't make it. Um, but yeah, so with KiCad, which is a great software, by the way. Uh, and uh, the firmware is done with the styling tools, but it's done with the free version of the styling tools. So there is no need to like pay any, any license for that. And we also release that. Uh, we release the project. And the, the software itself is also like, you know, included in the, in the repository. Uh, but, you know, because uh, to make it somewhat simpler for people, we don't only provide the source, but we only provide like binary files. So if you don't want to, you know, build the whole thing from scratch by yourself and go through all the process of l learning how the whole pipeline works, because it's a very complex system, we provide you know binary images that you can just, you know, upload to your module and then it just it just works. And you know, automatic update features, which are also great. Uh, so this is this is an example of you know the what what the project. Uh, looks like in KiCad, and you know, you also like you need some uh, like custom symbols that we also have a separate open source repository for. And uh, and then the 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 actual firmware itself was designed in a very modular block design way. So uh, you can you can integrate your own pieces of code by just designing a block and like integrating it with the rest of the block design. Uh, which is again, as I mentioned just now, we we give all the project files available uh, open source, and like everything is done with a free version of the tools. And again, you know, because we are, because at the end of the day, what we are doing is just running an Ubuntu on the uh, on the OVC itself. Uh, you you can literally just SSH through it and like treat it as your normal uh, Ubuntu. So you know, you you can run OpenCV, you can run. Uh, Raw, so you can run whatever interface you might you whatever piece of software you would run on your normal Ubuntu, and access it through the network interface, which is also very convenient. Which brings us to like this was like the OVC three, so we have we have just a, a second revision which which just fixes a bunch of the issues which is currently under fabrication, uh, and the design files for this are uh, are already online. So what we what we found out. Uh, during development is that m many people, uh, especially for robotics and drone applications, which was the main application for this project, um, many people don't need a very complex board 
uh, with a lot of, uh, of additional features, but they just want, for example, a like good IMU and access to a few debugging ports. So we designed a much smaller, much simpler, we call it like a fanny pack board. So it's a front, a front a forward mounted expansion board, which you can see over here, which you know has a, for in this case, a vector nav IMU and some debug interfaces. And then we also fix some of the minor issues. And here it's in a, uh, it's in another uh, rendering, which we, we, we think this is, this, you know, one of the lessons I learned is that this is a much more likely application of just wanting to expand with a few additional features and not wanting like a huge set of new features from your board. And then of course, the, the most interesting part is that uh, we, we, were, we are uh, looking into and probably designing and releasing uh, the, the next version, which is an OVC4, which will be a similar concept, but it will be even more modular. So now there the, the won't be any sensors on the mo computing module itself, but it will just uh, be a module with a lot of connectors, and then you can connect uh, whichever camera you want or whichever additional sensor or piece of hardware you want. So you, you can be like fully customized, basically. Um, and the, the idea is not to restrict uh, anyone to a, a specific like sense of configuration or hardware configuration. And you know this this one you know stay tuned in the coming months to see how it's going. Okay, which is great. Uh, so now we only have, you know, this this is the, oh, what what you see over here is actually an example of uh, a. Um, a stream from the camera with the corner detection happening in the FPGA. So you know you can see like this, the circles are like the, cor the corner features detected by the FPGA algorithm, which we learn are always like very useful for you know, localization and mapping applications. Uh, so here there will just be a bunch of videos which show both the OVC and in a sense like the, uh, the ROS ecosystem. So, um, the, the most simple application you can do with a stereo camera, you know, is just uh, like get depth of objects. So this was, you know, our, our intern Brandon some like a few months ago. And this also using this uh, stereo, like stereo disparity package, which is a f again a fully open source ROS based package, which is a com compatible out of the box with a camera. So now you plug our camera, you download this package, you run this package, and you know, in like 10 minutes you have like disparity images, and you know you have like object depth, which is very convenient because it's it's like you know if you had to implement it by yourself, it would be quite a, quite a fair bit of work. Oh, you know something else? Um, there is also uh, mapping is also a very common application. So if you want to like have your robot uh, move around, so we had this uh, this this example in which he used this library called RTAB Map to move around the camera and then build a map of our previous office in One North. And again, because you know the RTAB map is an open source package, our camera is compatible with it out of the box, it's a, it's a very, it's like very simple and r fast to get this up and running. And finally, another, another, interesting, uh, another interesting application was to detect objects. So in this case, we wanted to uh, detect a water bottle. And again, we, you know, we have point cloud processing libraries which do cylinder segmentation. So they, um, try, they try to detect the, uh, the, they try to detect cylinder and to detect the pose of the cylinder. So in this case, you know, it's like, like yeah, moving the cylinder around. And again, you know, the usual, the usual, you know, compatible out of the box. And this was the final demo, which is the most interesting one, actually. So we, we had this, this project also with a robotic arm. So we decided, well, why don't we put together the cylinder segmentation, which you can see happening in the top left where the camera is detecting the cylinder. Why, why, don't, we, why don't we do some sort of like eye arm system where we have a camera that detects a cylinder and then it uh, tells the robot the coordinates of the cylinder and then the robot will do the robotic arm will do will plan a path to pick up the cylinder pick it up and put it into a different place 
and this this was a bit more of custom development, but again, uh, the you know, because the the so the the cylinder detection is open source, but even the whole library that is used to do the uh, planning and motion for and control of the robotic arm is also fully open source. So in, in a sense, it's it's not only about the camera, but it's also about like the whole um, ecosystem and like how you know how it makes it easier to to develop, I would say, robotics application by leveraging work done by other people and not you know not reinventing the wheel all the time. So yeah, now, now he's doing this experiment where he tries to keep the keep the bottle actually not in a, in a non naive pose, you know, not like straight up, but actually keeps it tilted. And then you should see the robot that he tries to plan accordingly, and then he tries to like pick up the tilted bottle that he just detected. And move forward. He's a very shy arm. It takes his own time to do things. Yeah, almost. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah, so this is like the move it uh, Ross library to let to the planning. Yeah, and there is some more. And then finally, you know, we, we also looked at like different uh, algorithms for, uh, you know, the, the, like in Ross, there is also like a lot of different algorithms that, that are implemented to do stereo matching and like disparity, disparity maps. And you know, then, you know, we can like compare the, uh, the two of them. So for example, you see that one of them, the one on top uses global data, so it's more, as you said, like that's a more global uh, optimization, so it's more dense, in the up to up to dense maps, which is also great. And then, you know, it wouldn't be, of course, it wouldn't be a, a good uh, conference talk without the usual slide at the end of every company saying, you know, we are hiring, but you know, of course, we are hiring, so you know, if anyone is interested to do, do cool robotic stuff, that's yeah. us, and that is everything. I know, Morgan is not there, Aaron is there, Aaron is there. Hi, Aaron. Yeah, so that's all from my side. So if you have any questions, you know, feel free to like ping me on my email or like, you know, find me at the booth later around and stuff. Okay, yeah, thank you. thanks. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah.